Okay, lecture 11, we're going to be talking about the evolution of stars. I'm going to go through the beginning of the lecture relatively quicker, and then through the middle and the end, I'll slow down a little bit because it gets really interesting stuff to rotate and collapse. These are called uh, star nurseries. Star nurseries exist in the interstellar medium, in, in, the, in, the, in the galaxies, okay? These are what breed the birth of stars. All you need is a huge cloud of hydrogen and then something to make it collapse, gravity, okay? Gravity makes the hydrogen collapse, starts spinning, and then starts forming a star, okay? The interstellar medium is the dust and gas, and the formal name for gas is nebula, which is found between the stars and inside of galaxies. It is composed of huge clouds of hydrogen gas about several light years in diameter. When this gas collapses, it forms into a star, okay? Events triggering heavy star formation, okay? Gravity by itself will cause these gases to collapse. But if you want them collapsing faster and forming more stars, there are some events that can tri trigger heavy star formation. Galaxy collisions and mergers. When a galaxy collides with another galaxy or merges with another galaxy, it can become such a dynamic event that you can have a burst of star formation. When this happens, we call that new galaxy a starburst galaxy. In uh, astronomy, we have some galaxies named after candies, or maybe it's the other way around. Candies are named after the galaxies, right? Milky Way candy, starburst candy. There's actually a galaxy type called the starburst. It's when two, two galaxies collide. Lots of stars are burst into formation. You see, next time you're reading the starburst candy, say that's a new galaxy. Lots of starbursts, new stars are being born, okay? Supernova explosions. Supernova explosion is a death of a star, right? But when a star dies, it can trigger the birth of other stars. Huh, interesting, huh? Isn't that similar to how our lives sometimes are? Someone's death can be the cause of the birth and survival of others. We know lots of stories like that where people have sacrificed their lives, right? So imagine here, there's a hydrogen cloud gas, H2 nebula. And then in the vicinity, there happens to be a star and then boom, I wrote in, boom. It, explodes and dies. What happens when it explodes? Lots of energy is released. That energy passes through this cloud of gas. That cloud of gas all of a sudden gets excited, very, very excited, you see? The energy is passing through. Look at what happens to the cloud of gas. It starts getting disturbed, starts getting disturbed. Oh, lots of new stars are forming now, you see there? Boom, 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 boom. The, that cloud might have produced stars already, but it might have taken much longer, you see? But because another star in the vicinity died, it's gonna become the cause for lots of new stars being born, you see? So that's interesting. Someone dies is the cause of the birth of others. As, as an example of where new stars are being born, one such example is the Orion Nebula. Orion Nebula is a present hotbed of star formation. It has four new stars among other ones. There's also other ones, but four, it has four famous stars and they form a trapezium. Uh, in astron in uh, geometry, you've learned of a shape called the trapezoid, right? Trapezoid, so this one does look like actually a trapezoid. Uh, Orion was one of my favorite constellations when we were on the constellations chapter, so I really like this shape. This is the belt of Orion. This is the armpit of Orion, and that's where Betelgeuse is. This is the sword. The head is here, and then this is the leg. These two stars are very famous, Betelgeuse and Rigel. Those are the brightest and second brightest stars of uh, Orion. The Orion Nebula will go somewhere, uh, somewhere here. You see here, Orion Nebula. So, of course, when you look at it with your naked eye, you're not going to be able to see it. Orion Nebula. 
There's another nebula over there that's very famous, horse head nebula. There's a, 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 a gas coming out and it has the head of a horse. Okay? It's over there. Horse head nebula. Orion nebula, horse head nebula. Okay, and they're showing you here the horse head nebula. You see here? You see the head of the horse? And then the Orion nebula will be down here somewhere. That's kind of funny here. See, it does actually look like a horse. If you, I guess if you tilt it this way, you can see it better. You see this? The horse head nebula. So the horse head nebula is inside the Orion constellation, you see. 